Hey everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman. You know what today is? Today is day 26 of the 31 days of horror. 31 movies, 31 days. It's very simple to do. It's very fun to do. And uh, every year I do it. I've been doing this for like about... I think, I think it's been 10 years. I think the one and only MSJ, myself and a few others have been doing it, you know, all this time. Um, mentioning the one and only MSJ... There are other people doing this. As I said, the one and only MSJ, Double Shot J, Random Horror, Retro Horror, I Am the Ice Lord, Carly317, Dave Maggot, and of course, the guy that I co host the Wicked Horror Show with twice a month, Tony Has Nine Fingers. Ask him about it. But yeah. And before we get started, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. You know, when you like something, it helps to get out to amongst the people so more people can check it out. Anyway, if you comment, I, it's just because I want to know what you have to say. I, I want to hear your thoughts. Did you Have you seen this movie? Have you not seen this movie? Uh, did you like it? Did you not like it? Whatever. Whatever the comment is, put it down there. As always, I am the 13th Wolfman. And so here we are at the 31 Days of Horror, Day 26. Today's movie is Terror Vision. That's right, Terror Vision. It's uh, produced by Charles Band, directed and written by Ted Nicolau. So you got Charles Band, who would go on to make like the Puppet Master movies, but this was before that. This is back when he was running Empire Empire uh, Empire Movies. Empire. Let's just call it that. Uh, Ted Nicolau, who worked with Charles Band as an editor on like Tourist Trap, wanted to direct a movie. And he wrote this and he went to Charles Band and said, I want to direct a movie. He goes, here's an idea I have. And so, he said, okay, there you go. Uh, D Diane Franklin is in this movie. She plays the daughter Susie. Pretty much unrecognizable. And her date for the night in this movie is John Grise. Now, if you don't know who John Grise is, he played the Wolfman of Monster Squad. He actually played the guy turned into the Wolfman of Monster Squad and the Wolfman. He uh, he played Boots in The Pretender. I mean, this guy has shown up everywhere, and this is like a younger version of him. So He plays a little metalhead in this movie. He's got a wasp t-shirt on and like, all the studs and the leather and the, you know, and it's just long hair and it's just very 80s looking, you know. Um, Chad Allen plays uh, Diane Franklin's younger brother, Sherman. And Mary Warnov from every other kind of movie there is out there. Uh, she's worked with everyone. She has worked with Roger Corman. She's worked, worked with Ted Nicolau. She's worked with Charles Band. She's worked with Jim Wynorski. I mean, she was in Rock and Roll High School as the principal. She was in Chopping Mall, you know, for a few minutes. She was in Night of the Comet. Two movies with Kelly Le with uh, Kelly Maroney she was in. But she was in Night of the Comet as one of the survivors uh, out in the desert. And she's in this. And she's in tons of other stuff. If you don't know who Mary Warnock is... Just look it up. You'll once you see her face, you'll go, "Oh, okay, yeah, I know who she is." But let's get to the movie. Basically, uh, the the father of Diane Franklin and Chad Allen, uh, Mr. Putterman, is putting in a satellite dish, and this is back when satellite dishes aren't the little things you see on the sides of houses. These are the satellite dishes of the '80s that took up like part of the backyard. You know, and so he's put in a satellite dish, and across the galaxy somewhere, someone has, uh, oh, what's the word, gotten rid of some space trash. They sent it out through an electric beam. And it bounced off some planets, and it wound up getting downloaded to, that you heard, you figured out, the Putterman satellite dish. Well, amongst the trash, there was a, there was a, space pet you know a big monster and that monster uh, 
is vivacious and wants to eat things, including people. And that's what happens in this movie. This movie is so 80s. So, oh, I forgot to say that the special effects in this movie were done, were done by John Carl Beckler. You know him as the guy that directed uh, Friday the 13th Part 7. Now getting back to the movie. Um, yeah. So this movie is so 80s. I mean, it, it just has that look to it. You you could try to make this movie nowadays um, and go, oh, I'm going to make an 80s movie. And you would you would fail because this just has that, that feeling to it. It has a very specific look. It kind of almost looks like it could have been shot on video but we know it's not and it's part of the double the double feature of the video dead so there it is terror vision i watched a little bit of an interview with charles band last night and charles band was saying that most movies he comes up with there's usually a title he goes i will have a title sitting around forever i guess terror vision is one of those titles he had sitting around forever and he even had the artwork this artwork right here all made up and when uh, Ted Nicolau came to him and said, I want to direct a movie, he go, he handed him the artwork and the title and said, write something. And that's pretty much it. So Ted Nicolau went away, wrote this movie, and he brought it to Charles Band, and Charles Band said, yeah, okay, let's make it. And it's, like I said, it's very 80s, very... Very goofy, very very trauma looking, very full uh, full moon looking. You know, the monster is definitely a giant puppet with like KY jelly just all over it. You know, it's it's a really interesting look for a movie. It's a fun movie. I this movie is more sci-fi than horror. Um, it does have a little bit of gore to it, but other than that, I mean, this this feels like more of a sci-fi movie because, well. An alien came to Earth and started gobbling people up. I mean, come on. If it comes from outer space, it's sci-fi. That's always been my rule, you know. Even if it goes in outer space, it's sci-fi, you know. Leprechaun, Friday the 13th, you know. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, Hellraiser. When they wind up in space, you're just kind of going, um, you know what? You went from being a horror film to a sci-fi film. That's my idea. That's my rule. That's how I feel. Whatever you think is your idea, your rule, and how you feel. But yeah, this definitely felt more sci-fi than anything. But it was a fun movie. It was a good time. Uh, it drags a little bit in the middle, just in the just a little bit. But it picks up again, and the next thing you know, the movie's over, and you're like, okay, I can put up with that little bit of drag. Um, it, it's funny, the parents, the parents in this movie, Mary Warnoff, and I'm not sure who plays the husband, they're swingers, they're, they're part of that whole swinging crowd, you know, they want to be, they want to be back in the 70s where people were swapping and having a good time, and their house is very, <laughs> very ordained with like, you know, bondage paintings on the wall, and naked female bodies, and it's just, it's, you know, a uh, statue of David is standing around, you know. And it's just very, very in your face. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking to myself that Diane Franklin plays like a 16, maybe 17-year-old girl. And I'm thinking, if this, if these were her, really her parents, she'd be going, what the hell? You know, I mean, it was just a very interesting movie. A very funny idea. It's like, you got the parents that are swingers, the Diane Franklin's a little punker chick, dating a metalhead, the son is a little soldier of fortune, he's about, Chad Allen's about 10, maybe 11 years old, and he, he's all obsessed with the military, you know, and he actually has access to an M16 and stuff like, that's how weird this movie is. It sounds bizarre, but it's a good time. I have nothing else to say about this, as always. I am the 13th Wolf fan. And I am on the prowl. Thank you.